I'd like to describe the design of this NMR circuit. Let's start with the pulse forming circuit, which is shown here. We're going to generate a 90 degree and 180 degree pulse, uh, and this is shown in this diagram right here. The 90 degree pulse is about 20 microseconds in length, and the 180 degree pulse is about 40 microseconds in length. Then we have a long pause followed by the same pattern repeating again. And this, uh, this pulse sequence is generated in this TTL circuit using the 555 timers. We have a CMOS switch, which then controls some double balanced mixers, which act as a chopper. And we have an 18 MHZ RF oscillator here. So this 18 MHZ continuous signal gets chopped by this pulse sequence, and we then get the same pulse sequence coming out at this amplifier, uh, which is modulated at the 18 MHZ that we want. We then amplify uh, up to about 10 to 100 watts using these two amplifiers, and then send the signal down to our sample chamber. Now, uh, this circuit is quite important because this is our resonant tuned circuit, which has to impedance match with the transmitter. We use an amateur radio transmatch in order to do that, and we also set the lengths of these different wires uh, to match uh, the impedance properly so that we get the maximum signal out of the uh, port here, which goes to the receiver. Uh, usually this, these distances are around a quarter of a wavelength to a half a wavelength from here to here and from here to here, and we generally work it out empirically since we are balancing with our transmatch here, and this will change the, the lengths uh, that these wires would be as seen from the transmitter. Our sample chamber consists of a uh, coil which the sample uh, uh, tube then fits into. This is inside of our rad radar magnet and the radar magnet is around 4500 gauze. It also has coils on it which allow us to put in some electric currents and change the magnetic field by a few hundred gauze up and down. In this way we can tune the magnet so it matches the Lamar frequency for the uh, hydrogen protons which are inside of our sample chamber. Now just to discuss the receiver, here we have a three-stage receiver with uh, a first linear amplifier, second linear amplifier, and third linear amplifier separated by 18 MHZ bandpass filters. Uh, this amplifies the entire signal uh, from uh, this port here up about 10,000 times, which then goes into our oscilloscope. And we make sure that we don't get oversaturation into our receiver from the, the large power transmitter signal by using these pairs of uh, 1M914 diodes, which will ground off any signals greater than a few hundred millivolts. The most important thing with the RF setup is the magnet. If you don't have an excellent magnet for doing your NMR, you're not going to see anything because the magnetic field has to be very homogeneous. Otherwise, the uh, different molecules in the magnetic field will be at slightly different magnetic field strengths, and that'll mean they'll resonate at slightly different frequencies, and what you'll get is destructive interference of the signal inside of your sample chamber, and you won't see anything. Yeah, so uh, this is a radar magnet that I managed to get from a surplus store, and this has a very, very good homogeneous field of about 4,500 gauze, which, uh, you know, it's generated right in here in this, this gap. The gap is quite narrow, and you need these surfaces to be very flat so that you get a very homogeneous field. Our sample chamber then fits right inside between these two poles of the magnet, and our sample test tube then goes in the top just like this. I'd like to describe the construction of the NMR sample chamber. What you can see here is uh, essentially it has an input port on this side and an output port on this side and the sample is put through a hole in the top inside to where the coil is. If we just take off the front piece you can see this is a enclosed metal uh, chamber which will ground off any interfering signals from the outside and we've got our sample coil here which uh, receives the transmitted pulse signal from the transmitter goes into the coil this way and then grounds off through the uh, chamber uh, at this point here and the uh, exit signal goes down this way and will go off to the receiver this way and we've constructed a simple um, sample holder which is a pasture pipette which we've cut off at the bottom and then glued it and we've got at this point uh, a glycerol sample inside and you can see this just fits neatly into the sample coil like that and then we can close it all up 
and put it inside of the uh, magnetic field of the radar magnet. And the idea is this has to be narrow enough that it can fit into the gap between the two poles of the radar magnet. So that's how uh, we've constructed this particular chamber.